It's LLC day. Kind of. <laughs> but it is when you're watching it. So welcome everyone back for another episode. Uh, getting very close, if not the week before, if I'm not mistaken, our anniversary. You should have been Tony, Tony, Tony reunion, not Joe to see reunion. Get it right. Get it right. Well, that that would be next week. Right. So I'll, I'll learn how to play music on next week's episode before next week's episode. So anyhow, uh, Jody C. Reunion, how are you tonight? Uh, I'm good. I have, uh, you know, been dealing with a few things, but that's how life is, right? You got to keep the guard up, your head on a swivel. So, Are your biceps cold? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. I'm uh, It's a new look. I'm testing it out. Got it. Magic, magic Jodeci, not magic Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks you for just the response, got jokes Governor. Tonight. <laughs> it's my state of deliria. It's okay. <laughs> Governor, how are you tonight? Um. <clears throat> okay. I. I'm just reflecting on what happened between last Monday and yesterday. And I mean, I thought my professional career was over. My my professional just worldwide, just running around like I'm oh, yeah, some no. wild animal. That last week was epic. It was really epic between I had a a, a recruit in Texas Relays, uh, Grenada, New York, to get back here. Got back here yesterday, and I am absolutely toast today. Like, <laughs> yep. Yeah. So my week is starting today, and it's over tomorrow. Yay. I was going to say, what day is it today? <laughs> it is Thursday. <laughs> I, I asked that question three times today. <clears throat> Well, welcome back to the States. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's not such a happy welcome back. Yeah, I think you'd much Boy. rather be in Grenada. <laughs> Shout out to Lyndon, by the way. Shout out. Oh, I'm sure you had the plug. He, he's you my know. MVP. <laughs> Last but never least, Clyde, the king himself. How are you tonight, sir? You know, it's a, it's a good week in Pettyville. Uh, <laughs> I got... I stood in the sun and got hailed <laughs> in the same 30 minute time span today. And no, I'm not in Texas. <laughs> I know. Right. It's very, very strange day, but you know, uh, I'm here. Awesome. Well, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the life. Uh, gotta love that global warming or climate change, however you want to classify it or deny it all that together but agreed we had those random storms was it last night i think crazy two nights ago anyhow uh going back to what the governor was alluding to i mean his squad had a great weekend at the texas relays cannot yeah. deny that one you guys had a great weekend so i really um, think of it so i was so excited yeah <laughs> Really Except cool. for we didn't know what day it was ever over the span <laughs> of four days. <laughs> yeah. That was crazy. But uh, Relays Weekend, I think, served to be really, really fruitful for a lot of people on all points. So, oh, excuse me. Um, I mean, let's start with Florida Relays. Let's work our way back in the time zones. I mean, not even the collegians. The branded people had a great relay. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll go go fix it. You're no, Clyde fix, Clyde I'll, fixed his lips to say something, so you gotta let him go. I, no. I'm gonna let him talk about the relay for sure. I just wanted to just just give a small preview to how ridiculous things have gotten. I watched uh, uh, two high school kids run 46 seconds and get beat to sleep, um, and I watched. A team run 337 and a team run 336 and lose handily in the women's 4x4. Four four. Mm -hmm. The high school girls 4x4. Four four. Like that's where that's where that's where we've gotten that. 
gotten to where high school kids are just destroying average college kids. This is true. And I think we're all here for that part of it. At least I enjoy watching things like that. Um, the Florida Relays, professional development, I believe, is the term. <laughs> yeah. uh, Olympic development, yes. The Olympic <laughs> development. Uh, four by one. Was one of the most petty things I've seen in a while. <laughs> Hundred <laughs> percent, which means I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it. Um, our esteemed uh, colleague, who is not here with us right now, was um, on his bullshit as, as he <laughs> tends to get around this time of year um, to run what I'm going to call the almost Adidas All Stars. Yeah, uh, to run Grant out the hole is extremely petty, and. <laughs> brilliantly done uh pj down the back stretch arian um making everyone else look like children Oof. Lord. and uh, anchoring with big joe well, it was brilliant 37 mid but here's why it's petty and i don't care he'll probably come on next week or a week after and then say oh it had nothing to do with any of that I ain't trying to hear it. Here's why it's petty. The The world has pretty much um, reconciled themselves to believe that the best possible American team that can be assembled would include Noah on the anchor and Christian on one. And it's a solid argument, and I don't think anybody's really going to you know, object to that. Certainly not me. But one of the humans that always gets discounted from this conversation in full is Grant Holloway. Mm -hmm. And 100%. No, one, no one ever, ever considers that Grant could be first. You usually hear tales of Grant can run third because he ran third in college and at meets like this in the past couple of years, he always runs third. And for the record, always makes everybody look like little kids when he does it. Absolutely. So, so for... For Coach Holloway to decide, you know what? Cool. If in theory, no one really knows what to do with the second leg and no one really knows what to do with the first leg, let me just fire these two shots and put Arion on third and shut all conversations <laughs> to the contrary down. But popping off Grant, everybody forgets that Grant won the NCAAs in the 60. Everybody forgets that Grant's PR in the 60 dash from years ago is 6.50. There was a viral video, this indoor, of Grant screwing around at World Indoor Championships, destroying Noah. It's on out of blocks. Um, time just, was the just, to win the championship. I, I need you to go back the year before there's the same video of him not destroying, but beating Christian mm -hmm. for right. 20 meters. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I'm just saying it, it was extremely petty and I loved every minute of it. And I'm, I am tickled by the narrative that has been assembled, What, which is, well, if Noah would have got the stick on anchor, then what? Then what? What? I, I don't know. What do you mean? I haven't really seen Big Joe get run down with a, with a 10 meter gap before. Yeah. I, I don't imagine that that was going to happen. <laughs> you know, so and to his so credit, I'll me, say that Christian looked pretty good running down the backstretch. 100%. Look good. He looked, honestly, he looked, I, I, I would say, spectacular. Now, I, you know, it's PJ he did that too. And, and, P, and, and again, he didn't destroy PJ either. And, and, and PJ is also a 989 guy. So it ain't like he's slow. Right, but but I, I want to give some backstory context to this because I think you'll enjoy and pile even more petty on this. Um, number one, and this happened three days before the actual race, when I found out what the group was in 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 our little goon squad group. I said out loud, if those four people train for a year with the sole purpose of breaking the world record in the four by one, they could do it. I was met with raucous laughter by all of my decathletes 
Um, and I was like, guys, this has nothing to do with foot speed. There's, there's been foot speed fast enough to run the four by one world record. A lot of times it's simple. It's always about the handoffs. We that day watched their, wait for it, first attempt at handoffs. The day before they ran in the meet, they ran their second attempt at handoffs. So we always hear about how hard this is. And we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars for relay camps. And I watched a team assembled run two relay practice and then get on the track and run 37-6. So, mm-hmm. folks, when, when adults are in the room and making adult decisions and making professional coaching decisions, these are the things that happen. Um, I, it was... It was a marvel to watch. Um, I was really, really, really hoping that that Noah would get the stick because I that I just honestly think that would have made the story even better. Oh well, yeah. yes, absolutely, well, that, absolutely, well, that would have. <laughs> oh, but, sticking with sticking with uh, Florida relays. By the way, the 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 edit uh, that came out. Oh. Afterwards. Oh, and and the post race interview, post race interviews were phenomenal. <laughs> the the post race interview was the most out of pocket. <laughs> like, it, it, look, I'm and standing like, there with with our with our co our, our colleague, and he says I should probably go shut this down. <laughs> and I said, Yeah, you might want to. And you then know. it broke up. Any but, any yeah. situation where Grant Holloway is trying to play peacemaker and right, okay, right. all right, okay, guys, okay, you know it's over the top. It is way over the top. Um, but rightfully so. Yes, absolutely. The, there are things that can and should be debated this year about that relay, but one is not. If Arian Knighton is not on the third leg, oh my I, that is not our best team. That's, oh just stop God. right there. That's it. Full stop. End of conversation. That was phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, so in terms of individual performances, I mean, um, for a collegiate athlete to open up their season with nine nine nine, and it's just like, okay. Did you see it? I did. <laughs> wow. Listen, I'm telling you, that looked like. Coach said we got two times one hundred with three minutes recovery. <laughs> yeah, he looked like he was about to jog back down to the start line. <laughs> like, Sit. Bah. Yeah, man. Well, you know he's well rested. Yeah. <laughs> stress? No stress. None. <laughs> no, no, no. Right. Race stress probably doesn't bother him. <laughs> so you know, thankfully. You know that that issue is is resolved. That he's back uh, running again, and I'm sure, you know, for him, you know, gratitude is probably at the foremost part part of his his brain. Um, I'm looking through. I mean, how did the twenty two thirty seven by uh, Miss Ford look? Uh, similar jogging. Okay. I, I asked her. I asked her coach, "Was her job to be the rabbit for the other young lady from South Carolina, just to pace?" He laughed and he said, "He went like this." No. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Like again, given five minutes, I'm pretty sure she could have done that again. Man, her anchor leg on the four by four said as much. And then you know, for a weekend that was spread out over three, basically three venues between Austin, Gainesville, and um, and Baton Rouge. Um, 17 men under 20 seconds in the 200? Yeah. I mean, what it, br- what it brings back to me is just how magical that place is for the 200. I mean, I was there when Walter Dix 
said hello world i was i mean and nothing's changed that 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 track is still magical uh from 2023 to 2099 17 athletes in the ncaa pretty much said okay this this is my opportunity and how many of them were opening up their seasons i mean very impressive um performances there <clears throat> so i know it was a uh slightly windy as things tend to get in these times of years but while everybody was consumed with the relay meets and rightfully so because those do grab the attention of the weekend right mm -hmm. um lsu put on a uh a track meet yeah they did uh <laughs> they sure down do. in Indiana. and miss brianna liston Ooh. yeah and seven yeah. Yep. Mackenzie Long, 1089. Thelma Davies, 1098. Like, hey, man. <laughs> Madness has already begun. Okay. Well, you know. I, I got one for you from Florida Relays that I guarantee 99.9% .9 of the people had no idea happened. Uh, in the interest of starting a fight at some level, um, Arion split 44 low on the four by four. Okay. <laughs> oh, that definitely went un under, way under the radar. Wow. I got a better one for you. Guess who he held off on his leg? No, a lot. Mr. Dos Santos. Wow. Ah. <clears throat> okay. I, I kept saying during the meet, the announcer here is amazing. But he somehow is underselling this. In look, in the Olympic development four by four, Arion ran a leg, Stevie ran a leg, Wade Van Niekerk ran a, ran a leg, as did Dos Santos. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Arion was faster than all of them. Except Stevie. Uh, I think I think Stevie had the fastest split, but I think Arion's was second. Wow. Strange. Yep. Yeah, what I thought was also funny is like, you know, being in Florida and looking at the Texas results, you kept hearing how Texas Relays was missing so many people, right? And I kept looking, you know, and, and I'm, I'm getting updates from other people about what's going on at LSU and all the teams that, that didn't go to Texas Relays. There are a bunch of teams from Texas that went to LSU. Yes. As an FYI, yes. right? So, so everybody's talking about like Texas Relays is gutted. It's not going to be good. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Like, I, I, I just I, I need people to understand something. There's certain things you like you can't kill. Like roaches in New York, right? Texas relays is always going to be Texas relay. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, you know, I, I you take you 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 walk out. The crowds there. The the energies there. The wind is there, and there's an expectation. Like it, it's just, this is a day, Friday, Saturday, you know, whenever you got to compete, you have no choice. And I've, I've had to impart that to my kids multiple times. Like, look, it's show and prove. It's show and prove. Those folks in the stands are not going to be moved by me mediocrity. They want to see something crazy, right? So um, when I when I was at Cal, I took yeah. my four by one to Texas Relays. And the very last thing I told them before they went out on the track is if we run slower than the high school time, than the, than the best high school team, we're never coming back. <laughs> <laughs> well, this year that might have been a little bit difficult. <laughs> you, had a, uh, you had the 100%. Uh, you know, third fastest time ever in the four by one by, uh, by the Dunkerville crew. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Um, so <clears throat> what, what was, what really stood out to me and between, uh, Flo's camp and Tonja Buford Bailey's camp, oh my goodness. I mean, team international with Asher Smith, Adele K, Lene Thomas and Juju yeah. running the de facto world record. I mean, obviously, you know, um, it, it won't go down yeah. in the history yeah. books. But they just, they get what world best? 
Yes. World. Yeah. World. Does anybody know why that's a distinction? Because they have to be from the same country. Same for country. country. Oh, okay. I, look, I know the rule as all, as you guys just stated, but does anybody know why? Because that shouldn't make a difference. Yeah. No, I don't. You shouldn't know be why. able to break a country record, right? Unless they're all from the same country. But if you assemble four people and they break the world record, it should be the world record. No, a number is a number, right? A number okay, is a number. Right. Exactly. So one twenty seven oh five. Like <laughs> do we truly understand right. how fast that is? Right. Well, well, one no flying. No, people don't because the four by two is kind of a gimmicky thing that isn't yes. running. Yeah. Right. And so there's not ever gonna be a true appreciation for mm -hmm. really good four by twos. And there aren't ever there are very few really good four by twos that ever get run. Right. That was obviously the best one ever. Yes. I, I mean, I was, 22 flats is 128, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just want to make, I'm trying to do math for folks because, you know, folks, be tough, they struggle with math. And Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I just, so here's, well, the Texas relays angle, I, I agree with it. It doesn't matter if the structure of it is is wonky. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter if it's three or four hours behind. At the end of the day, that meat and the culture surrounding that meat yeah. mm -hmm. will always produce high quality performances. Mm -hmm. You know, and there's always crazy stuff that happens, like the prelims of the hundred. They got five point oh wins and all this stuff going on. Right. Right. It's right. you know. Honestly, the the most impressive thing that I saw, uh, both on the results and and watching it back at Tex Relays, was um, one Gabby Thomas. Oh my goodness, oh, that was. Woo! Yeah, Gabby, Gabby's back to doing Gabby things. Yes, and and for Tina, yes, baby boy, and for a a woman who has done so much in the sport, has medals behind her name, and is still somehow consistently undervalued yes you could even say marginalized yep like all she does is show up every year and compete at a phenomenally high level absolutely and you know if she's going to open her season like that i'm not going to sit here and i'm not going to sit here and pretend like she's irrelevant in the hundred because that performance says that she's not yep Everybody <laughs> acting like she's just not going to make the 100 meter team or she's not even going to be in play. It seems <laughs> that there is a plan in place for her to be in play. Yeah. I'm here for it if she can pull it off. I mean, that, that was pretty phenomenal. And then she doubles back uh, in the 200. Yeah. And runs 2208. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, legal, I might say. I was like, just, the, just the legal training run, you know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Uh, um, for most people, that is a lifetime achievement day. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so kudos to Tanja Buford Bailey for, I mean, she, Tanja will tell you, I mean, she loves to send messages. She, she loves to make sure people say, okay, all right. I'm here, present. Um, you know, Tamara Clark second with twenty two twenty one. Um, Lena Irby twenty two seventy. I mean, awesome, awesome uh, results all around. Um, and, and here's the thing with Tanja. In the same way that that Mouse was out there calculating serving yep. notice in his four yep. by one. Absolutely. Don't get it twisted. Tanja was doing the exact same thing. Doing the same thing. Where was Gabby on the track? Where was Tamara Clark on the track? Because mm -hmm. Tamara, mm -hmm. Tamara took a lot of heat for almost blowing the preliminary round at Worlds, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, you know, to the point, those two women train together and they work out all the time together. And if they so both happen to end up on Team USA, it might make sense to let them run two and three together. Yes. It looked pretty good this weekend. Sure did. <laughs> yeah, you know, so it, Tanja's been on fire all season. The, <laughs> the American record in the short hurdles, that was Tanja. Yep. Okay. Yep. So her, her crew is, is doing very, very well. So for me, the you know, we talk about under the radar 
And you mentioned um, the 44 second run um, by uh, Arion. For me, the most understated thing I saw was one Miss Dina Asher Smith laying the lumber, and I don't, I'm not afraid to say it, it's there on video, to Britton Wilson. And it was... Yes, she did. <laughs> I'm sitting there and I'm going, oh my gosh. This is this is the code that could be the you know this this is how you crack the code, and I don't know if that's ever that was ever a part of her vernacular, like oh my goodness maybe I could be a viable part of the four by four for Great Britain, or maybe running the four hundred or running relays that sort of thing could help me break Stay the code. healthy exactly, so to see it was pretty phenomenal for her to execute the way she did. I mean, yeah, I'm sure when practice kicked off on Monday, she was in a very good space because that's the kind of thing that even at this advanced age uh, part of her career, she's now learning new tricks. She's learning now, okay, all right. So it, it's not enough to just be good in the two. If you're going to line up with the best, right? Look at look at what the best in the world are doing. So that that was and by the way your your two training partners are adept from the 100 to the 400. So what choice do you have? Agreed. Um before we move to the next topic, um I told him I was going to do this and there's no way I'm going to let this ridiculously petty moment go by. And KOP, I didn't say anything about it because I thought maybe you saw it, but obviously you didn't. So I'm going to tell you about it and you're going to laugh out loud. Okay. Everybody, when they, they go to meets, and certainly at, at Florida Relays, they're always, hey, can I get my kid in the fast heat? Hey, can I do this, that, and the third, right? So our illustrious colleague gets a, a genius epiphany one morning because uh, I heard the whole backstory behind this. So he let everybody go where they wanted to go in their heats he put everybody get he, he said yes to everybody's acquiescent uh, uh requests right he put his best kid in the fastest heat and everybody ran fast and he ran 146 he then ran the third heat of the 800 that had <clears throat> nine florida gators in it <laughs> and i Listen, I have a picture of the finish line uh, of the finish line results, but I'm going to read. I'm going to read this. 14803, 148.06, 148.21, 148.42, 148.48, 148.78. It looked like a Florida poster across the first three lanes of the track. So you know what that is? And then, and then the poor three guys that sort of fell off at the back, 150.8, 151.17, and 151.99. So I want you to just – just they had seven people run under 149 on the same day, six of them in the same race. So that's equivalent to when the uh, they're preparing – for the Beijing Olympics opening ceremony and they are practicing the drum sequence and they had to tell yeah. the drummers, hey, smile. Um, this this is too scary. This is <laughs> this is not gonna go over well on TV. It just is not. So please, while you're beating the drums, yeah, please smile. I was standing next to a <laughs> photographer and I said, take a picture of that scoreboard right now because you're going to want this scoreboard when it comes up fantastic that is very 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 funny that is <laughs> Clyde KOP petty oh yes. it was the most KOP thing ever <laughs> well single-handedly got six guys into the regional meet in the, in, in oh, the 800 huh. in one race hey so, sometimes you got to do what you got to do sometimes you got to uh you know just kind of give people an opportunity to make a point. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and so I, I will, I will throw this out there since Chewy said she wanted to go coast to coast. 
Um, Stanford Invitational is not a relay meet. Um, they had a new schedule this year that I thought was actually pretty dope. And the new schedule created an opportunity for me to, uh, I'm not going to say it was a petty intention because it really wasn't. It was more of a throw the kid in the deep end and see if he can swim mm -hmm. kind of. And so if, if you pay attention to Stanford uh, the past, however long, obviously the distance runners are the highlight. They're the show at Stanford. We get that. Um, they usually run hundred meter prelim and finals um, on Friday, but this year they moved the hundred meter final to the Saturday showcase and put it back to back with the high school hundred meter people, which I thought was pretty cool. And they did the same with the hurdles. So we have a, uh, a young man from Cincinnati, Ohio. His name is Malachi Snow. And the hurdles are definitely his primary event. But the boy looks like he can sprint a little bit. He won our conference championship indoors running 6'6". Six, six. And when I saw the schedule, I was like, well, I might let him run a 100 hurdle, 100, 110 hurdle, 100 meter double at the championships. So let's... Let's see if he let's see what he does. Makes the hundred meter final, nothing really spectacular. He ran like 10 5. Um, but then in the final on Saturday, he proceeds to run 1350, win legal, and 15 minutes later, he like he crossed the finish line the hurdles, did an interview, circled back to the start of the hundred, and got in the blocks. He's a freshman. He didn't put his pants on. He didn't do anything that he's supposed to do in between the races, right? And ran 10-2 and won the 100. Hmm. That dude is, uh, is a little bit different. And it's, you know, it's it's rare that you get your hands on, you know, one of these type of kids. And I've never had, you know, I'm a hurdler. I, I was a hurdler. I've never been able to work with a hurdler that had that those level of speed capabilities and it's 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 a fun process and i was very very proud of what that young man did this weekend and that, it it shocked a lot of people a lot of people took notice of it now he didn't get a full pass he doesn't get an a for the day because he absolutely messed up my four by one by the way <laughs> um, y'all ever gone oh for four at a track meet in a four by one we no did. We, we did <laughs> men women a B. Nobody got to the finish line. Oh. So that's how my day started. But it ended much better. And so I wanted to uh officially shout out the freshman from Cincinnati, Ohio, Mr. Malachi Snow. Uh, well, well done, sir. Um he's had he's had the week off. <laughs> right. So and uh we're we gonna fix this relay situation before we get to Gainesville. That's funny. Indeed. What's next, Chewy Chew? All right. Well, uh, it actually was alluded to. And so let's bring it back in. All things pertaining to the four by one. What's the most important? What are the most important things to coach and direct in the four by one? Keep the baton oh. moving. <laughs> does hey. Clyde get to does he get to talk this week? <laughs> Clyde, Clyde should go first. I think Clyde should go first. No. <laughs> no. Because here's the thing. As coaches, <clears throat> we screw up a lot of things from time to time. Mm -hmm. Yes. But, but what you have to understand, and I don't care if you're coaching high school, college, pros, or you're just you just deal with the pros when they show up for a camp. If you create the, the most important thing is spacing. And if you create the proper spacing, at that point, it's supposed to be simple. A la the mm -hmm. Gainesville Elite crew. Right. But sometimes you can create the proper spacing and people just find a way to screw it up anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, there's a certain level of, uh, you know, I take no responsibility in this, right? <laughs> but no, in all in all seriousness, like the spacing is everything. And you know, 
there are a handful of people that I think do this really, really, really well um, in our business. And one of the best ever, I think, has been Sanderson. Oh, man. And, you know, I remember as a athlete and a young coach, who I used to listen to Vince talk about four by ones and, and just his mentality and, you know, behind it. And it always made just so much sense to me. And one of the biggest things that I took from him and, and, confuses the young people that I work with today because of how they've been raised in the event is I tell them, I don't actually care if we get the stick around, if we're going to do it safe and slowly, I don't care. I'm not interested right. in watching. I'm not interested in watching my men's team run 40 point when there's children in high school running 38s. Yeah. So I'm uninterested in, setting up safe passes. I'm uninterested in causing car crashes between my athletes just to be like, Hey, we got to stick around. We got no, to stick around. Yeah. I'll gladly take the L's now, as long as we are learning how to run through mm-hmm. the zone. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's a process, but you have to teach them spacing because you're never going to run fast without it. Right. And that's, and that's just, there, there's been too many good teams, professional, collegiate, and high school, <laughs> that hold themselves back from all-time great performances because they they have no spacing. Yeah. So, you know, and getting back, I mean, I'm I too am a student of Vince Anderson's teachings, you know, and it's not a. Um, it's not a coincidence that he likes to start athletes off by learning to chase, right? <laughs> Spreading them out way beyond, you know, any, sh- there's no way they're going to catch the person, but you have to chase them. You have to chase them. And the same thing applies to the person getting out. Your goal is to run away from your teammate. And it's something that, I, you know, every time I say it, that, you know, Every now and then I get a look on somebody's face like, but I'm, we're supposed to connect. Well, spacing is the key to that. If the spacing is right, you run out like a bat out of hell. He's coming in like a bat out of hell and you space it right. And the person understands spacing, that stick will not slow down. And the next thing you know, you'll be like, okay, where did that come from? Right? Yeah. And that's the magic of the zones. It's the magic of the zones. Patience. You're running up on your, on the person you're giving the stick to. When do you say, when do you give the signal? When do, well, you're giving the signal while you're running up on the person. You don't wait till you get there. Not well, not once you've already arrived. Not once (laughs) you're there. And again, it's a skill, it's skill acquisition. It's reps and you're going over it, you know, every week. And I, I will belabor the point. I will never relent from getting these athletes to understand that you are, there is going to be a certain point of intrepidation, like, oh crap, he is getting out. And you've got to take that, throw that out the window and you got to chase him down. That's if right. you're trying to get the most out of it, like you have to have nerves of steel. And let's not even go into what it means to be on third leg and watch, see eight people or nine people coming at you full speed and you're running away from them into a turn. You have to be wired a certain way. And Vince delivers that point. You have to have a special individual that is able to lock in on his lane, his the athlete coming in. Sorry, I'm running away from you. I don't care that you're the best leg on our relay. I'm going to humble you today. You know, and, and it's and that's the part that, you know, I'm trying week after week to impress upon my kids that when it's done right, it's three different kamikaze missions happening in one. And that's why the risk reward for four by one is is so great, right? Um, but yeah, I I love coaching it. Um, it's still the scariest event to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
because anything can happen, right? Volatile. But when you get those four individuals in sync, it's a beautiful thing. I, I agree with both both of my colleagues, and so I I, I will add a, my two little nuggets, and then we will we will push on. Um, number one, I think so many coaches get so caught in safe and feeling the goal is to get the stick around, and the truth is the goal is to get the stick around fast. Mm -hmm. That they lose sight of. You have to be a DJ, right? When you go from one song to another song, you have to match the beats. Mm -hmm. You have to match the beats per minute. You have to match the tracks so that it's a smooth transition, right? So if this song is already faster than this one, then you got to figure out how to get this one to work with this one. That's what, that's what matching your personnel is about. That's what picking mm -hmm. your personnel is about is who are real starters who are real accelerators who are who are who are cool customers who are pr prone to freak out you have to know your personnel and then you have to match their rhythms two and i think this is my favorite one you wouldn't run into if you're a guy and you have flowers you would not run into a room with flowers stuck out and just give them to any old woman you're going to pick the person that you want to give the flowers to. And the first thing that has to happen is you have to see them. So when you say stick, if that also moves your hand forward, there's something wrong with that. Yep. Stick requires yep. eyes to work, see hand, hit target. Right. It does not go like this. Stick. Because now... The person who is blind is seeking, but the person who can see is not. Right. Right. See hand, hit hand. And I see that mistake more often than any when I watch relays of any level is there seems to be this desire, this hot potato to get out of their hand, stick here. Yes. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> say word, see hand, put stick in hand single-handedly one of the most difficult things to 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 get through to kids because you're saying that and in the same sentence yes i want a fast uh exchange well this is not a fast exchange a fast exchange is means that you're running as fast as you possibly can and you're giving the stick while the person outgoing is running as fast as he possibly can, right? And that's the part that's that's always like, but coach, I thought, no, no, that's not I what I did. I ask you to think, <laughs> thinking. You know, and that's why, you know, I mean, being a jumper and, and Jodeci reunion can, can relate to this or being a hurdler and having to negotiate towards hurdles, 10 hurdles coming at you fast, and being able to judge distances is critical. It is absolutely critical. Because, you know, whether the person's running away from you or whether the person is, you're, you're running up on the person. The issue I'm having right now with my relay is like, but he wasn't at full uh, pace yet, so I had to wait. No, you didn't. If the person isn't responsible enough to get out, give him the stick. Right. And that's where the individualizing comes in. You have to make a decision. Make a decision not to slow it down. Do not wait to run up beside the person and give it to them. Right. So uh, we, we, don't, we don't want the pause with the no, baton. No, we don't. Just keep moving. The baton pause is bad. It is bad. <laughs> My thing, and, and, people laugh when I say this. I've said this at clinics, I've said it to coaches, I've said it to parents, I've said it to athletes. And, you know, you don't always have this option, but if you can avoid respectfully putting two dummies together, <laughs> do that. Because you don't want two confused people trying to work together. <laughs> exactly. You don't want two uninformed people trying to work together. 
Don't want two scary people trying to work together. Like if if your number two runner has an anxiety issue, your number three runner can't be anxious. Exactly. It's, it's not going to work. Exactly. <laughs> so just you got to you know, know your personnel. Like that, that's, figure it I out. I feel like that is one of the f- most important things is you have to know the you got to know which pieces you got. Yes. Yeah. Vince Vince had some choice words for that individual. <laughs> and I'm not going to repeat it because, you know, but it's very true. Yep. Oh, there are, I'm sure there are some that people are going to say, hey, you guys didn't say this. Not about all of them. It's about the key ones. So mm-hmm. take away. Keep the stick moving. Say that again, Big Lee. That was <laughs> absolutely. Tell them. Take <laughs> notes, people. There are nuggets. Um, so last but not least, a little bit of a fun one. So what coach, oh, excuse me, one per gender who does not currently coach track, who does not coach track, um, do we think would be a good track coach? So can we do men first or are we doing men and women together? Sure. Let's do men first. Go Jodeci. Uh, I'm taking Mike Tomlin. Right. You took my answer. <laughs> Listen. You took my, my answer. Thank Mike you. Tomlin said something on camera. That oh, I now just wish every, <laughs> I, just think, I wish every coach on the planet would ever listen to it. He said, I absolutely love when coaches avoid taking responsibility for coaching. There it um, is. Like, hello? Yep. I'll take that guy to lead people to do anything. Oh, man. So he said, Sorry. I run, he said, I run through coaching. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I guess the men is over because we all. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's because that was mine, too. I mean, oh, you know, come on. Y'all are better than that. I mean, we could throw out some other names, but I just wanted to be clear that we all came to yes. this. Yes. Without I, talking to each without other. talking to Using Mike Tomlin. Yes. That, that, I mean, that is true. <laughs> Big League, you got, you got a different guy? No. <laughs> I, got, I don't have. No. You know who else I think would be a, an outstanding coach, an outstanding track coach? He is a guy, but he doesn't coach. He um, Did he up for y'all? Oh, I yeah. Basketball. And, all right. Can y'all hear me now? Yeah. Yes. yes. Who did you say? Hello. Yes. Uh, Gino Oriyama. Oh, sure. Sure. And I would say Gino for be, women. Because I yeah. can't imagine. I, I, that's why I said he is a man, but he doesn't coach men. Mm-hmm. His ability to not take excuses from anyone is an, an essential, an essential gift in coaching track. Because he's like he's kind of like he doesn't have a stopwatch, but he kind of does the same thing we all do. Like the, the eye in the sky doesn't lie, right? We all do that. He does that with his own things. But when you listen to him talk, I cannot imagine having an excuse at, at youth on basketball. I don't think that would go well. No, I, I, I like Gino's mentality in general, and I think he has – look, because let's be clear, coaching this sport takes te- certain temperament, and, and I I think Gino's temperament mm-hmm. and communication style would, would play very well in, in our in our game. Mm-hmm. All right, I'll go last in the women since I stole everybody's answer. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. <laughs> now – Who's going? You you gonna you go, Clyde? I'll I'll go. Um, my, mine is you know apropos for the moment that we so happen to be in right now. I, I don't care what y'all talking about. I'll take Don Staley to coach whatever. So now you took my answer. <laughs> are you but kidding I, me? I have another, I have back are we seriously? <laughs> are we seriously on this way? Hey, it happens. Governor, oh, we should man. just hold. Make sure nothing slides away at this point. Just. We're useless. 
I, I don't I don't see how the answer isn't Dawn. See, and, and and again to the same issue that I just said with Gino, it's about her temperament yes. and her communication yeah. style and her ability to connect. Yep. That that's what it is for me. Like there are great uh other female coaches in the basketball space. Mm -hmm. But to bring those people into this world, yeah. no, no, no. Dawn State. Yeah. <laughs> There is, there, um, is, there is no, go ahead, go ahead, big lead. No, 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 go, you go. There is no substitute, in my opinion, for, uh, for someone who is a leader to basically show you how intense they are and keep their voice down and yeah. keep the, the everything. Facts. You talk to you see Don Staley at a press conference or a post rate uh, post uh, game interview or whatever, and she's just here talking to you, but don't get it twisted. Yeah, and that's the part when when you're trying to 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 deal with the best female athletes in the world, and get them on the same page and get them to understand, this is what I need you to do now. And this is how I need, there, there is, in my opinion, I mean, she's the best currently at doing that. There's no question. And those young women are not questioning her leadership at all. No. You know, and that's what's needed in track. I, I feel like if you've got a, a, a squad with young women that are superstars, you've got to find a way to, hey, come on in, come, hey, come on back. Circle up. We're gonna do this together. Um, yeah, she's she's crushing it right now. There is no other. Thanks, Clyde. Okay. <laughs> hey, I'm a game cop. <laughs> so, and I don't know as oh, of recent. I'll go be honest. Ahead, I'm not. Big league. I'm not following sports much other than us turning left and doing stuff like that. Um, the idea Barnes, who was in the public eye a couple years ago. I don't. I don't know her status right now. I, I think she's still at Arizona, but I don't know exactly what's going on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The she, idea of Bar Barnes, who was out in the public's eye, that was that was pretty cool. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think she uh, she could rally some troops together for sure. Yeah. Um, my my backup answer because I had a wild thought that my answer was going to get stolen is is Becky Hammond. Mm. Yeah. I yep. think I think I think Becky Hammond could coach all of the field events. Mm -hmm. She has that very calm. Um, I can explain this to you in a complicated fashion, but it'll be simple, and you'll be able to do it. Demeanor. Yeah. Both genders. I've seen her coach men, and I've seen her coach women. It's the same. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same. Oh, that was fun. Uh, yeah, was funny. Fun. funny that we all chose basketball coaches. <laughs> a football Here. coach and a basketball coach. Go figure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah I'm sorry. I, for women, we chose basketball. Mm -hmm. I wonder like, if we actually gave it a little more thought if there's a different sport that would resonate. But... Well, it, it again, I mean, what are we exposed to yeah. Outside, you know, when you talk about Olympic sports, you know, we know that there are great coaches out there. You know, yeah. it's just these are the coaches that are in the public eye, you know, as mm -hmm. far as you know, what we see mainstream wise. But yeah. obviously, whether it's swimming or tennis or gymnastics or whatever, I I'm sure if we were we had enough time to observe, you know, the great coaches in that uh arena. Um we we could find some others, but yeah, the, that's that's the, pretty crazy. The uh, whatever you want to call it, renaissance that women's collegiate basketball is going wow. through right now, it actually pairs very well with the rise of what was the Big East. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because within the Big East, there were superstar players for sure, and you know all time great names that you know everybody fell in love with and followed the schools. But the coaches 
we're the superstars. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. You have your Caitlin Clarks right now, right? Mm -hmm. But the coaches are actually carrying it just as much as those players are. And yeah. it's the coaches that are the household name <laughs> in women's basketball right now. I can't think of another sport um, from an NCAA perspective, at least, where I know the names of any coaches. <laughs> but, but women's basketball, you know a bunch of them. Yeah. We just so all happen to be uh, fans of Don Staley and called her out because <laughs> she's the best right now. But, awesome. you know. Yeah. You know, from Gino to Tara Vanderveer to you know Kim Mulkey, whatever your flavor is, pick it. But the, but the coaches are, you know, the big names right now, and you know, hopefully, you, you will start to see other you know sports catch flames the same way. Like mm -hmm. volleyball is exploding, softball is exploding, but there's no real names attached to that. Not not in the national spotlight, not in the national eye from coaches or players right now. So everything continues to grow. Maybe we'll learn some of them. Agreed. All right. Well, a little bit of education, a little bit of fun, and then a little bit of randomness. That makes all an episode of the Athletics LLC. Sounds appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as everyone gets ready to travel again, get ready for their meets, have a good one, be safe, and we'll see each other soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>